Hi, it's Paul, and welcome back for another edition of Fantasy Dream Homes. Well, today we're going to Bald Head Island, North Carolina. Let's check it out and see some Fantasy Dream Homes. Okay, hang on tight, boys and girls, as we head into Bald Head Island, North Carolina. North Carolina. And we're going to stop right here. Just so you can see, i back out just a little bit here. Uh, just basic geography, where we're at in the United States. So here's North Carolina. There's South Carolina. And it's just north of the South Carolina border or, or uh, north of the southern border of North Carolina. So let's uh, let's go ahead and continue in there. And so where is there we go. Okay, great. Okay, so Baltan Island, it's a village located on the east side of Cape Fear River, and it's, um, I'm just looking at my show notes here, it is uh, accessible by ferry from the uh, nearby town of Southport, and by four-wheel drive from Fort Fisher to the north. Um, there are, according to uh, Wikipedia, there are very few cars on the island, Instead, residents drive modified electric golf carts. Uh, the pop. This is a smaller uh, area we're looking at. The village is uh, about 158 people at the 2010 census, and it is considered part of the Wilmington metropolitan area. Where the heck is Wilmington? Well, Wilmington is way up here. That's at least 30 miles up the river. It's, it's just, it amazes me that they consider that part of Wilmington. But that's what Wikipedia is telling us. Um, it's a popular location for vacation. It was the primary filming location for the film Weekend at Bernie's in 1989, as well as being a major location in The Butcher's Wife in 1991. Uh, Bald Head Island has played a part in two American wars. During the American Revolution, it was home to Fort George, a British fort. During the Civil War, the same redoubts served as Fort Holmes, a Confederate base of importance for shipping and smuggling. Now, what's a redoubt? Uh, it says, because I didn't know what a redoubt was. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture here real quick. This is a redoubt. It's a fortification typically within a fort, a fort. So you would put your cannons there and you'd have your, I suppose, your sharpshooters up there or something like that. But now, we, you know, we tried hard, but we had to learn something. So, uh, okay. Another thing that is known for is sea turtles. Walden Island is nationally recognized for its sea turtle nesting activity. The abundance of sea turtle nests have led visitors to use the phrase, I'm on turtle time, <laughs> which signifies the carefree and feeling of being on Baldhead Island and car free. The carefree and car free feeling of being on Baldhead Island. Mm, isn't that quaint? Uh, okay, so I just wanted to point out one th So we always use Google Earth for several reasons. Notice that, so when we go into Bald Headed Island, let me just go in a little closer here. And it's going to use its yellow demarcation to mark the border of, the, of actual Bald Headed Island. Now, this is interesting because according to Google Earth, this is Bald Head Island, everything inside the yellow. But go to Google Maps, and we see that it's extended further north along that uh, waterway right there. So, I don't know, maybe you can tell us in the comments which is right and which is wrong, and maybe they're both right, and maybe it depends on flooding and all kinds of things like that. But 
So for now, uh, it's, it could be anywhere from here or here, you know. So anyway, uh, let's talk about the climate. The climate, and I love when people take the time to do this in Wikipedia. Every, every uh, city should um, have a cl climate chart like this. It is a humid subtropical climate with hot sum with hot humid summers and cool winters. Well, I would say <coughs> that's not necessarily true. If you look at these, these are definitely, I would say, I suppose you could say that's hot. But, I mean, there's a lot of places in the United States that get into the 90s uh, in Fahrenheit. Um, so, eight, you know, you're talking... Oh, it's upper 80s. Uh, yeah, I guess you could call that hot. Um, I would call this a temperate climate because guess what? In the winter, the two coldest months in the northern hemisphere are typically January and February. And if you're only getting down to 55 or 57 or 13 and four, 14 in Celsius, that's not really that cold. I mean, t take a look at cities like Minneapolis and Milwaukee, or uh, that's the area I live in, uh, or, you know, uh, how about uh, Toronto or, you know, um, uh, you know, um, Winnipeg, North, you know, Manitoba. There are plenty of cities that are going to get, you know, down to zero or below zero. So the, this is very, 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 very mild comfortable winter you know so no need for winter clothes in a place like this but if you're in california believe it or not there are people who are going to wear winter clothing when they when it gets down gets down to the 50s you know and especially the upper 40s forget about it they're putting on their heaviest winter clothing so anyway um the chamber of commerce there are two chambers commerce sites i'll we will include these in the show notes and I don't know which one is the real site. This one that says official site, so that must mean that this particular site was uh, paid for by somebody else and maybe a private interest group, maybe the Restaurants Association. Don't know. And uh, so I apologize for my my uh, computer taking so long. To, apparently, this is the official site for... I always recommend going to the uh, Chamber of Commerce sites because they're typically going to have um, the events that you won't see uh, when you're looking at other areas. Uh, also helps to go on Yelp uh, to look at the best restaurants or do a Google map search for restaurants. Save yourself time. And you'll see a lot of uh, Google reviews for restaurants and hotels and things like that. Okay? So... Um, trying to figure out, did we cover everything? We did the climate and Chamber of Commerce pages. Yeah, so let's get into our homes, okay? Our first home is going to be, and let me uh, punch in this address here real quick, to Google Earth. Uh, There we go. So we see it's on the west side of the island. And I always, always recommend you've got to look at your properties. Before I would even call a real estate agent, you know, it's nice to look at the Zillow. We're using Zillow, by the way, in this particular example. Sure, it's great to look at their, you know, listing, but they're not going to typically show you this kind of view. This is going to tell you a lot. How much beachfront do I have? Uh, what? How close am I to the neighbors? You know, um, let's take a look. Let's go in closer. I always use Google Earth for this kind of stuff. So here's our house in question, and one of the questions I always have is how close to the neighbors. So you go to your little measuring tool right here, okay? And the beautiful thing about this measuring tool doesn't matter what country you live in. You can say, uh, show that to me in feet. I want to know how many feet I am from the nearest neighbor. 
Okay, so right there you see you're about 65 feet. And let's see how far you are to this neighbor. Mm, you're about 50 feet. Okay. Put it in, put it in, uh, you could put it in yards or meters. So you're about 16 and a half meters, something like that, to that guy over there. And I mean, this is just rough. You're about 12 meters from this this house right here. So, I mean, there are all kinds of places. Some cities, they just jam the houses right next to each other. There is almost no space between. Uh, and this one has a little bit of space between. So it looks like our driveway is hidden here. I believe it's right here because I think these gables, this, this is our driveway. And that's like a, that's actually a court. Let's go in a little closer. That's, it's a design that's on the concrete pathway, which I like, by the way. We, we don't see that enough. So anything else remarkable about the neighborhoods? You know, you know how close you are to your neighbors. You know it's a beachfront property. You know it's a really, really long way to that. Well, I mean, you know, all right, well, here. Let's use our measuring tool. Let's go to yards. How many yards is it? Is it the size of an American football field? Boom. American football field is 100 yards. That's 180 yards. You know, that that is a long way to the water, you know. So just keep that in mind, you know. Um, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe you don't care. So um, let's go to, so we know where that is. We're going to go right to our real estate page. Bring up our our house video notes. And the house number one here was going for, is going for 3.9 million. Uh, we'll call it 4 million, okay? And then there's your conversion for euros, uh, 3.47 million in pounds, British pounds sterling, 3.12 million, Australian dollars, 5.46 million. New Zealand dollars, 5.75 million. Canadian dollars, 5.27 million. Okay. If anybody wants more conversions out there, I'd be happy to do them for you. Built in 2003, this particular home, six beds, six baths, 5,500 square feet or 511 square meters. It's 0.92 acres, not quite a full acre, or 0.37 hectares. Three-car garage with a workshop, so I'm guessing the workshop's going to be on top. Um, cedar shake exterior. I like that they took the time to tell us what the exterior is made of. You can't believe how many times they never tell you that. And this is, by the way, this would be the real estate agent's description, okay? 3,200 square feet of outdoor decks, verandas, and patios. Okay, so there's plenty of outdoor recreation area, that tells us. Maple flooring throughout, good. Nice description there. Well, it's good to know. Walk-in china closet and walk-in pantry. Can't wait to see those. Specially designed dining room ceiling. Interesting. And the MBR, I assume that means the master bedroom wing, includes another bedroom and full bath as well as the master sitting area. Dressing room closet, uh, spa-like ensuite, and covered deck access okay let's start looking so here we are house number one cedar shake exteriors okay and this uh, i assume is what you're looking at as you pull up in your golf cart on the street and got there's your uh, garage doors right there so you'd um kind of a interesting way to enter a uh, nice little archway that opens, and I assume this is going, yeah, it's going underneath the house. Uh, nice stone. And there's those big, you know, veranda. And so this is a great room. Um, I, I love I love high, high ceilings in a great room. Um, good luck washing those windows. I love them, don't get me wrong, but you always try to think of the maintenance and... You know, 
you're either paying somebody to come in and wash those uh, a few times a year, or you're going to get yourself up on a ladder and wash those windows. You know, so just always keep that stuff in mind when you're looking at homes. Fireplace, nice stone here, and it looks like, I wonder if that's wood storage. I don't know what it is. I'll bet you anything they don't show a closer picture, so that might be all we see. There's your maple wood flooring. Beautiful. I think maple, a light maple like that is gorgeous. Okay, so there's your special ceiling that they were talking about earlier. It's a wood paneled ceiling, which I love to see. Why not, if you're taking it, if you're going to be spending that, this kind of money, uh, and let, as a refresher for myself, so four million American. I want to see some, I don't want to just see a white, sheetrock ceiling i want to see wood paneling you know and lots of lights like that's that's gorgeous don't you agree now i'm wondering if back if we have recessed to lighting i'm thinking they don't they would have turned it on would have been nice if they would have put some run some recessed lighting there um so this is your formal dining area maple floor again uh lots of sea views here that's what you like to see. Another view standing on the other side of the room so you can see that big patio area. And okay, so now we're in a kitchen and this is sort of a deceiving picture and deceiving is not the right word. It's optically deceiving, okay? I don't want, want to imply that the real estate is deceiving. I, I believe that all. You, you you can only photograph what you have to work with. So he or she was squished into a corner here, I'm guessing. And the reason I say it's deceiving is this is a very long, narrow kitchen. Um, and the, it, I say narrow because when you look at the size of this table, it's, how, it's almost halfway out into this the volume of this room you take another half you could put another table there and your kitchen so it's pretty narrow let's see if uh i love the big uh stainless steel vent ventilation for your uh what i'm assuming is a gas cooktop over there okay and so now we're at another end of the kitchen look at how look how much space is in here so I'm almost thinking they could have brought this this whole island over one, but they wanted to angle it. I want to go back. It looks like they angled it there. It's it's like I say, this is why you have to walk through homes because photographs are only going to tell you so much. You might get in there and go, whoa, 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 this kitchen is too small. So. Uh, and I didn't comment, but gorgeous woodwork up here. Beautiful. All right, so here we have what appears to be a work area. This looks like a work office area back here. And this is a lot of work area, too. So this could be, you know, you know the one of the marriage partners, husband, wife, or whatever sits here or here, you know, and they both have their own private little area. That's kind of cool. Another shot looking at the same area. That's that desk area we were looking at before. Comfortable furniture, good views, ocean views, and that's in the price area. You could, you better expect, the prices were in, you better expect some decent ocean views. So, Okay, so here's that great room again, and this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, but if you're ordering these photographs, why don't you put the this with the original one we saw at the beginning? You know, so you have so you know what room you're in. If you keep jumping from room in the room and then you jump back to a room, it's gonna make it confusing for people. So they have nice in uh, built-in display cabinets with a uh, beautiful lighting. Great place to display your crystal. And this looks like some other uh, informal seating area. We're in a bedroom, and which bedroom, I'm not sure. 
and uh, I almost wish they would label these. You know, here's another reason you go into a house to get the true idea of the colors. Is that a mauve? Or is that some other color? I'm guessing because they put this really, really bright area rug in here with these deep purples. I'm guessing this has to be a mauve color. It looks, you know, um, so interesting uh, use of colors. Nice wood trim. I mean, this is, uh, and notice all the rooms have this crown molding along, you know. This is what you get when you get into multi-million dollar homes. And the builder took the time to add lots of detail everywhere. You know, you see this woodwork. Looks like, the, and, and this is, uh, this looks like a master bedroom closet. Yes. So that, that's the master bedroom that we're looking at. So the, and you're seeing more and more of these grand master bedroom closets. Very cool, in my opinion. I love them. I think they're great. You know, it's just an excuse to have more clothing. <laughs> mm, master ba bathroom. Beautiful tub. Sinks on both sides. So you do the butt bump if you're both at the sinks, you know? <laughs> All right. And that appears to be a shower area. It's a step-in shower. Standing shower bench where you can sit down and you know dry between your toes or whatever or I don't know um now I'm confused I love these lights gorgeous what room were we in sorry I'm trying to, I'm just trying to all right well beautiful lights um you can't, you can't, if you, you know, for sure, once you get into the million or above, you need to start thinking about, well, we're not just going to have ordinary lights. Go to a lighting store and start looking at lights. There's, there's thousands of lights. If you go to my Pinterest page, which is the same name, Fantasy Dream Homes on Pinterest, and you can see I do have a lighting page because there's tons of ways to uh, provide lighting in your house. And I'm a huge believer in going to LED lights and see and this light matches the white room. Um, LED lights because it it's conserves energy for a lot of reasons. They are, they use w way less power than an incandescent bulb or a fluorescent uh, bulb. They, they use the least amount of power. They, they, they're they cool to the touch. Or I, maybe not cool, but they are lukewarm to the touch. You don't burn your hand when you touch them. Uh, anybody who's still using halogen needs to get rid of those. I mean, the halogens can be a downright fire hazard. So this looks like a guest bedroom right here. Interesting built-in and in shelves uh, as a headboard. Another guest room. Uh, again, not sure on that color. Is that white? Or is it really, really a soft blue? Or oh, Wait a minute, is that the same room? No. Yes, it is. Look, look at the difference, the striking difference. Okay, there's your green chair. There's your yellow uh, bed cover, okay? It almost looks white, or it could be a blue, and boom, all of a sudden you see, oh, it's lavender, you know? Oh, somebody likes the uh, the indigo part of the color scale here, which I don't have a problem with. I love colors, you know, so. Um, but keep in mind that for resale, a lot of people don't like colors. Um, unfortunately, here in the state of Wisconsin, um... I, I used to sell furniture. I was trained by one of the best designers in the Midwest. And he would say, you know, in, in Wisconsin and a lot of Midwestern states, people want to see white walls, white or beige carpets, and they don't want to see color. So if you're selling your home, got to paint it all 
white and beige and you know carpet it keep it keep it neutral tones um, so two beds a little study area everything's got a view two single beds see how the camera can distort you're thinking is that a full-size bed and that's a twin they're actually the same size bed look at the pillows pillows will tell you it's actually the same size another guest bedroom and there are six bedrooms here so okay I like these little you know when you're getting dressed you have a seat there you know or whatever a uh, little study area I like that that little alcove really cool and we're back to that room again see where they're jumping having us jump back and forth okay so now we're getting to look at our big outdoor recreational spaces um big it's a big area definitely and that's our three car garage right right or am I wrong there's two there's one there's two is that actually a door I don't think so I'm pretty sure it said let me pull up the description again um, three car garage with workshop well I don't know where the other garage is unless that is a door I don't know okay we're back to this room again we've already had this picture and we've had this one so that's uh, it for house number one want to talk to you uh, you know not a commercial break but I want to talk to you about something very important and this is especially if you're buying a house I want to talk to you about the subject of due diligence and I thought I just recently finished this book Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup. And this is about the company Theranos and the, and Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, she dropped out of Stanford University her sophomore year, and she started, um, uh, she filed a, uh, a, a I, I don't know, I, I think it was a, tr a, a, a patent or whatever, for a new technology that basically was able to, the claim was that it would be able to analyze blood by simply wearing um, a wrist wearing device. And not only would it be able to analyze it to find out what the problems were, um, you know, if you had any problems like diabetes or, you know, um, you know any number of diseases, it would also be able to inject medicine and, and fix the problem almost immediately. I mean, we're talking really science fiction stuff here. Now, where does due diligence come in? Well, they went through several, several rounds of fundraising. And companies like Safeway, who is the second largest grocery retailer in the United States, I believe they're number two, they invested... Uh, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in in um, changing the layouts of their store and putting money into the corporation. And Steve Bird, who was the CEO at that time, uh, kept promising, uh, in, you know, his company's investors, oh, well, we're working with this company Theranos, and they've got this great invention and stuff like this. And Walgreens was another one. They, they built these... Um, in their Arizona stores, they built all these little, um, you know, dis display areas for this Theranos product and everything. And it was supposed to be the next miracle of, you know, the next big thing in the medical device industry. And, and you know, very credible uh, people like Mark and Dreesen were saying, you know, we're saying what a great woman Elizabeth Holmes was. And... And we're talking many companies. Uh, Rupert Murdoch, he invested over $100 million. And uh, there are a lot of companies that invested hundreds of millions. I mean, they literally had companies investing billion dollars, but there was one problem. 
the technology never worked. It never worked from day one, and they never, for the years they spent fundraising, it never, never worked. And they and Elizabeth Holmes is probably, she might go to jail uh, and face some serious jail time because she misled investors and made them believe that if the technology worked and that, and she made claims that were completely untrue, like, oh, they're using this in Afghanistan. The U.S. military is using it right now. Uh, no, no, they never did. They were never using it. So the point is due diligence, which is about doing your homework before you plunk down a lot of money. Now, so whether you're going to buy a house whether you're going to build an in-ground pool or an above-ground pool or pave a driveway or, or um, hire a contractor, you have to do your due diligence. you got to do your homework. And no illustration is better than this. I found this one. It's how to hire a contract for interior concrete work. This can apply for anything. I mean, if you're hiring an architect... If you're hiring a lawyer and you're about to pay your lawyer a ton of money, you want to know who you're working with. So, and I love this this uh, graphic because it, it is such excellent advice. It says, re- number one, step one, research and learn. Search for the web for colors, textures, patterns for patios, driveways, pools, decks, walkways. Ready to go? Call or email several contractors in your area. Note response times. That's an important thing, note response times. If they take if they take a week to get back to you, well, what's going to happen if you have a problem? It's, it's going to probably take longer. It's probably going to take two or three weeks because everybody typically responds rapidly to a, a sales query. Get written estimates. Estimates, consider timeliness and thoroughness of bids. Make sure producing a sample is included. Discuss any special situations about your project. Step four, compare apples to apples of the estimate. Verify construction procedures, start dates, and job duration. Verify all inclusions or omissions. Do your due diligence. Check references. Check the Better Business Bureau. Check licensing insurance. It can be something as simple as... Let's say you're going to hire a plumber to uh, to do a, a bathroom remodel in your house. Go down to City Hall, uh, your local City Hall. Talk to the person who, who hands out permits and say, what do you know about this guy? Do, do, they, do they come in here for a lot of permits? Are they brand new? Do you hear any good things or bad things about them? You know, they might even tell you at City Hall, we can't, we're not allowed to discuss that. But it doesn't hurt to ask. The worst they're going to say is we can't say anything. So sign the contract. No verbal agreements, exclamation point. That is so true because you're going to get yourself in a world of trouble unless you, you need to have a written document. Include a payment schedule. And, oh, by the way, you should know what is a typical payment going into this. And you could find this all in Google. You can say, how much do you typically have to put down for buying a house or buying a car or doing a kitchen remodel? What's typical? You know, and it, it depend it can depend on the builder, it can depend on the area that you're part of the country or the world that you're in. But the point is do your homework. Approve the sample and pay on time. In other words, you you're you've found, you've done all this homework. You found a good person to work with. Now treat them right, pay them. They deserve to be paid on time. And that's due diligence. I just don't. There's so many people, homeowners especially. There's so many, so many bad builders out there. It's not just the United States. I know for sure. There are plenty of bad builders up in Canada um, and in other countries. And what happens is these crooks who pretend to be builders is they will, you know, they'll agree to build your house and, and people don't have enough legal protection or signed documents to protect themselves and they end up doing a horrible job. And so the, the homeowners 
turn around and sue the builder, and the builder declares bankruptcy, and next day goes out and starts a brand new business under another name, and he's he's not liable for anything. So that's why just protect yourself. Do your homework. Just take the time. You might have to spend two, three, five days. I mean, this is the hardest part. When you go to check references, you're going to have to get... And the, if anybody who balks, any builder or contract that balks at giving you references, you do not want to work with. They should be able to find, provide a list of at least 10, if not 20 people. You go around to their homes or whatever, ask them, all, have a list of questions you want to ask them. You know, like, did he get the work done on time? Was he, did they clean up after themselves? Um, did they do professional work? Can I see the work? Is there anything you would, you'd like to change about whether you'd work with them? Would you work with them again? You get the idea. Do your homework. Do yourself a favor. Do your homework. Um, quick story about that. So, recently met this wonderful woman, um, Lucille, and she um, wanted to put some, some uh, metal shutters on her house and um, actually I'm not certain that they were but she wanted to have some shutters uh, put on her house and she this is her house in North Carolina and so she called and got two estimates well she called probably several companies but she narrowed it down to two companies and she liked the, and she basically was seeing the same type of shutters one builder was offering 7000 for the whole house, and the other builder was offering 10000 So her curiosity, and I would be equally as curious, if you're selling the same product and they're two different contractors and they're both selling the same product, why is one so much higher than the other? And so she went beyond just going, talking to the contractors. She knew who, who the manufacturer was, this Eastern Metal Supply, and she contacted the manufacturer, and she said, well, you know, she told about the price discrepancy, and that's when the manufacturer said, oh, well, they're two different, you know, they're similar products, they look identical, but one is storm rated for up to, say, uh, I don't know what the, it was storm rated up to uh, maybe 100 miles an hour or 120 miles an hour. And the other product for the $7,000 bid was not, I think it was not even storm rated for more than uh, 50 miles an hour. Well, you get any kind of serious, and they get lots of them in North Carolina, you get any kind of serious storm that whoops through there, you spent $5,000. What are you going to do if you get a 70 mile an hour wind and half of your shutters are blown down? So you just lost $2,500 worth of shutters because you didn't spend the extra um, 3000 you know, or if you spent, or if you lost most of your shutters, you didn't get the storm rated once. So I applaud her because she did her homework and she said, no, 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 I've got to have the, I've got to have the ones that are rated for, you know, basically for hurricanes. You know, because we're in hurricane country, so we need shutters that are going to stay up in a bad storm. So, bravo to her, Lucille, for doing due diligence. Let's go on to our next house. Enough said about due diligence. All right, so this next house, and I'm going to pull up my notes here, is a, uh, $12 million. $12 million U.S., uh, $16 million Canadian. These are all, by the way, these conversions, as always, are done on a particular day that I'm, I'm talking about it. it. These currencies fluctuate dramatically from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day. New Zealand dollars, 17.46 million. Australian, 16.58 million. Uh, British pound sterling, 9.48 million. And euros, 10.55 million. Built in 2005, five beds, six baths. 5,514 square feet or 512 square meters. This one's on a bigger piece of property, 2.56 acres or 
1.04 hectares. So let's uh, let's uh, punch in our address here. And remember, we always go to Google Earth. Okay, and hit search. And now we're going over to the eastern side of the island. Okay, so clearly it's on a bigger piece of property because now the neighbors are quite a bit further away than the last house we saw. Again, it's a long journey down to the beach. Matter of fact, they built this walk in... I can tell you already, the reason they built the walk is this is not something you want to be walking on. It's probably, uh, you know, irritating to the feet. It's some kind of sagebrush or I, I don't know what we'd call it, but... Um, so they built a, a nice long walk uh, down to the beach and let's keep going um, in the else remarkable um, super quiet street why do I say that there's only three houses on it here's your street really starts right here and maybe they're building it that's is that a house maybe that's a house so four houses but only there's only one neighbor that's gonna pass you. It's this person. It's the only car that's ever gonna go by are the cars that belong here or the delivery trucks that go to here. Otherwise, you're not gonna have any traffic going by here. So it's a very quiet street. Okay, moving on. Um so tons of this house is built <coughs> rectangular roughly lots of gabled roof in rectangular shape so that most rooms are going to have a view and for 12 million they better they better have fabulous views okay so that's just closer up oh i like the lighted uh staircase that's nice it, that should be a must it almost should be code okay so now i'm guessing yeah see this is this is a very narrow house because it's really really long and it's all about views of the ocean every every room's going to have a view you can tell already nice uh, walkway underneath there or maybe that's where you drive your golf cart remember we're on a golf cart island so i love you know don't just give me concrete put down brick that looks cool you know, take a little extra time, but isn't it worth it rather than just looking at boring concrete or blacktop, which is even worse? And that looks like uh, wood decking material. And that looks like cedar shake, although, did they tell us? In the, oh, wait a minute, let's take some, I want to go back to that. Uh, sorry here. Let's go to the description. <clears throat> wow. Now, that's it. The other house had a better description, but this house is way more expensive. If I'm, if I'm hiring a real estate agent, you better take the time to give me more than one paragraph when you walk through the house. I want you describing what type of wood floors I have, what type of appliances I have, you know, what type of... Uh, they don't tell us here at Cedar Shake. I'm just guessing that. There's nothing about what the outside materials of the house are, you know. So, come on, real estate agent, step up, do your job, get paid good money, earn it. Okay, and these are all plants that are indigenous to the area, which is I like to see. Um, here in the United States, one of the problems is everyone wants to put up so much lawn grass that is just it doesn't work anymore. This has been, in an area like this, go with the natural, the things that are going to grow naturally. That's what you want to see. It uses, saves so much water. A lot of outside views here. Okay, so there we have our garage. Aha. Oh, this, this is why you do Google Earth. I want to, where is that garage? Aha. It has its own separate driveway. That's it, because look at that roof. That roof is this roof right here. So go back to Google Earth. So you have a 
guest driveway where it's one of those circular driveways, which is really nice, but a private driveway. And the reason I like that is, do you really want your garage to be one of the focal points of your house, especially at this dollar value? I don't think so. I think it's, it's you know, a garage is a utility building. Don't make it a focal point unless you're going to do something spectacular with it. So let's keep going. Uh, and I love I love the brick, just gorgeous. And that looks like a you know um, a could be another bedroom, could be a work area. Let's let's keep going. They don't tell us in the description. Nice entryway, huge blue doors. And they're, you know, they're arched doors. Those are really cool. And look at the shutters. Think that uh, this is hurricane country? That's smart. You got to, you know, you live you live in earthquake country, you better have earth houses built to earthquake code. If you live in a hurricane country, look at those huge wheels. Because those doors probably weigh 100 pounds each because they're probably hurricane-rated doors. But they're easy to close with those giant industrial wheels on them. So, another view of the sidewalk. And here we're seeing a lot of dork, your classic, uh, sorry, ionic, ionic column there. So... Little Greek architecture thrown in. Well, that's weird. So here you have a smooth column, and then here you have this. You know, uh, it. it uh, I would think that you wanted your columns to look the same all the way across. But what do I know? I'm not an architect. Nice outdoor sitting area. But we're seeing a lot of the same shots. Okay, we're finally inside. It picture number twenty-four. Really, it took that long. So here's your long narrowness. That's narrow, isn't it? Because that's that's a typical sofa or a couch, whatever you know, whichever you prefer to call it, or some people even say Davenport. But look, you only got four feet on either side of that. So and that's that's probably six feet long. It doesn't look like a big one. Six, four, ten, fourteen. So you figure to the windows, maybe 18 feet, window to window. Not very, not very wide. And this is just a wide angle shot, but still, it, what I do like about this, it looks very comfortable and, and you know, appealing to sit down and lots of little different conversation areas. Okay, so we're dealing with a formal... That's a great big fireplace. Look at that, that mantle, man. That's huge. Um, formal dining area. Looks like seats ten, two, two, four, six, eight. Wait a minute. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. This seats twelve. Okay. I hope. And very interesting. I hope they show more pictures. Yeah. Look at that. That's wood. Those are wood chairs. So I wouldn't even be surprised if those are custom made. Those are very unusual. Almost look like seashells, don't they? Like cl sort of clamshell kind of look to kind of go with the environment. But then you have this candle opera thing here that almost looks like Spanish architecture. And I'm looking at these metal plates here, which also, and almost an aztec -y look here. So... I wonder what a designer would have to say or an architect to have to say about it. Uh, very unusual buttresses here. Um, and I don't know if that's the correct term, but that's what they appear to be to me. The the framework that's hold, holding up uh, the supports. Oh, see, that's these are gorgeous. But would they be comfortable to sit in with that ribbed backing? I don't know. Maybe they're incredibly comfortable. Uh, beautiful to look at, no doubt about it. Gorgeous. Okay, so there's your kitchen area back there. Great big ventilation. Serious ventilation. But a small island. 
uh, one, two, three, four, four chairs. Um, don't see a fridge. One wall oven? you got to be kidding me. In a $12 million house, you only have one wall oven? Are you never planning on cooking? You should have a double a wall oven. Um, little wine cooler. That's nice. Uh, looks like a sink here, but this also looks like a sink. Where's the cooking top? Uh, I was wrong. Oh, that was the handle for the for the uh, teapot. That wasn't a, a, a faucet. Um, so here you have a Wolf range. Good taste. You always want to have high-end appliances in it. Anything over a million dollars, you need to have high-end appliances. So that would be Gaganau, uh, Mila, Wolf, Viking, uh, Sub-Zero. Those are the kind of names people expect to see in these homes. Let's keep going. And so you got four burners, and that could be a removable. And my guess is there's a griddle underneath there. But uh, nice. Plenty of ventilation. Interesting cabinets. I like them. I mean, they're kind of got a country-ish look about them. Country is not one of my styles, but, it, you know, if you said, Paul, this house is yours, I'd say, hey, thank you. I'm not changing a thing. <laughs> uh, nice. This almost looks like it's screened in. Doesn't it look like puckering from screen? This looks like it's screened in area, screen porch. Keep the bugs out. Oh, I I find this amusing. Somebody took the time to fill these glasses with ice. Uh, I'm guessing the real estate agent did that, and good for them. Job well done there. It little things make the difference. Okay, so there we have. And uh, hey, what happened to our pitcher of ice and water glasses? It's gone. Somebody drank them already. Okay, wait a minute. Did I skip something there? How did I skip ahead that far? Okay, so this is this is kind of interesting. So uh, this is appears to be a bedroom that's self-contained within this long narrow. This, please tell me, is the op is this open so people can hear the conversations as they walk by? It almost has, doesn't it? Almost have a Japanese motif to it now. Boy, there's so many different styles going on here. It looks like. You know, these one of these. Um, it, it just it looks like we're we're in Tokyo right now, um, but I I do love the glass and the stained glass. That's really cool. Okay, so bedroom with tons of pictures. Oh, is that the same room? Okay, so this is at the one end right because we have it's right up against you can see a railing there this this ends this I've always loved put the TV in let it um, look at that how it disappeared it, it what it does is it it, it, it it submerges down into that piece of wood and that closes so that's one place to put a TV. Another place is to put it right up on the ceiling, angled, looking right at the, the. But this is this is pretty cool too. So, and I like the fact that you can hide it because, especially with flat screens now, who wants to look at a TV when it's off? It just, you know, there's there's nothing pretty about them. And that's that looks good. Um, liking it. Darker panel. Wood panel floors here. Lots of uh, lots of this color. Sorry, I'm not a color expert. I'm not a designer. I can't tell you what color. Oh, oh ho ho ho! What else do I notice? There's a walk area behind this bed. See this bed frame, and then behind it, there's a walkway. Now, which begs the question: Is this is there, is this sealed off here? I don't know that we're ever going to be able to know that. And that doesn't tell us anything either. Oh my God, it is. It's a walkway. So it's a totally open bedroom. I do not like that. I want privacy. So anybody can just walk through here 
and boom, they're all of a sudden they're walking right behind your bedroom while you're trying to sleep or something. That's just, I don't know. And let's see, this is the other side of the bed frame. That's strange. Oh, wait, I want to see something. What is this? Is that central air? Boy, I'll tell you, if that's if those are grates for central air, bravo. Bravo, because I get sick of looking at the same metal grates all the time. Somebody actually took the time. I'm thinking that's central air. Nice. Okay, outdoor seating area. Got a love seat for two. Climbing a love seat for two. That's nice. Same area. Hmm. How many bathrooms were there? Five beds, six baths. See, none of these are ever labeled, so. And I don't know if that's the f fault of Zillow or if the people don't take the time to label the pictures. I don't know. Uh, because you see a big shower like that, that's got to be a master bathroom right there. Boy, they have lots of these little sitting areas, don't they? Another TV that hides. That's kind of cool. And now we're looking in the same spot. Looking back, it looks like a little wet bar they got going on here. Okay. That's the, that's the garage. The, below it is the garage. That's what this area, that's where we're going to. Hold on. Or, and that's that stairway up. I don't know where we're at now. No clue. Cool little bench city right next to a window. This place is big, isn't it? It's really big. Office area. What do you think of that color? Put that in the comments. I see, I wish I would known what was in that garage, above the garage. I'm not sure. Real cool stairway. You got this globe lighting. Which is very unique. I'd like to see that lit up. That's, uh, I think that this is way more impressive if you saw this in person. You go, wow, this is this is really nice. And this is the top of the stairway. And we're coming down a hallway. Looks like there's a uh, bathroom. Uh, who knows? We go back outside again. We got us bouncing all over the place. Now, here, this is interesting. Looks like there's a telescope deck or a outdoor scene deck that's right up on the roof somewhere. Okay. I bet you that's not going to get moved, used much. I'll bet. I bet that rarely will get used. Um. I mean, I love the woodwork here. You know, the all the little different things with the woodwork going on. Beautiful door. Mm-hmm. Beautiful flooring. I think that rug's got to go. I think it's pathetic in there with the, with everything going on here. It's like, whoa, come on. I don't know. That's just me. And that's the bottom of the staircase. And it's a gorgeous staircase. Now here is a completely separate private, you know, bedroom with... You know, no walkway behind it or anything. Oh, I love this. Don't you? So you can lay down and read a book there or just sit there. and Oh, this is... I love these little alcoves. A little reading nook. Another bedroom. And that's a... See, we jumped back and forth here. Okay, we're back in our little reading nook area. And we're looking at it from a different angle, so you can see the shelves. Oh. So, just like with lighting, take the time. If you're building a, a really nice home, get accessorize it with with quality stuff. This mirror is beautiful, you know. Bathroom, another bedroom, private again. Hmm. Makes me wonder about that original bedroom. Excuse me. Beautiful ocean views. 
beautiful ocean views everywhere. Another bedroom. Holy cow. Two different, you know, size bedding. Two different colors of bedding. Another bedroom. And another bathroom. Okay. We're getting to the end here. More outdoor shots. It is beautiful at night, isn't it? Gorgeous. Okay, so that's house number two. That's it for Bald Head Island, North Carolina. Well, those were some pretty fantastic dream homes, weren't they? Fantasy dream homes. That's what we're all about. Okay, so I um, hope you liked them, and I also hope you were paying close attention on that uh, segment we did on due diligence. I can't stress for you enough how important it is. Uh, whether you are you currently own a home and you want to have do a kitchen remodel and you're going to hire a, say like a plumber or a, or a building company to do a remodel for you or whether you're going to pave your driveway or do an in-ground swimming pool or above ground swimming pool there's a million well, you know even if you're going to hire an architect you've got to do your due diligence you have to do your homework to find out are they going to be a good fit for you are they going to uh, treat you fairly? How do they work with their other customers? Are their other customers happy with them? Check out that graphic again about due diligence. Uh, it will really help you out. I thought it was an excellent graphic. And as always, so glad you took the time to watch. If you like the program, please give us a like button. Um, also, if you want to be notified of future videos that we're doing, click the little bell. They will notify you every time we come out with a new video. And for gosh sakes, please subscribe. We need as many subscribers as we can. Also, check out our Pinterest page, Fantasy Dream Homes on Pinterest. That's, how, that's how, what it's known, Fantasy Dream Homes on Pinterest. So thanks for watching. Take care. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.